Hey, Paula. Did your power go out last night? No. Uh, they said Madison City had a big power outage. I'm in Athens. Oh, I'm on Athens Utility Boston. Or um, East Limestone. Okay. No. Well, uh, while you're getting your coffee and all that good stuff, um, kind of introduce where we're going with this today since this is our last session. And uh, I may have mentioned previously that uh, the times that I've taught this before, we, we've had a lot of different uh, lengths of this course. We've done it in one day, we've done it in eight weeks, six weeks, four weeks. I'm just trying different things. This is the first time I've done it in three weeks. And the one thing I've realized is I have four videos that I think are really, really important to watch, but you really can't do that in three weeks. So I had to make a choice today about which one to go with. And so I elected to choose one that's a little more practical, um, just because I think People typically have told me, I, I kind of want to have not a script, but I would like to have some sort of a framework to actually start conversations and move through them and, and not really get lost and bogged down. And so this week, uh, the two that I was debating uh, that are both very, very valuable, the other one's called True and False Conversion, which really deals with um, the, the theology of, of well, false conversion and, and and I have the video for you so that if somebody wants to watch it on their own uh, and what it's dealing with is the parable of the seed and the sower and how we realize that when the Word of God is, is spread is there's not just a hardcore for Jesus and hardcore against there's also these people that like mushrooms can spring up and appear to have some sort of belief and faith but over time tribulation cares of the world various things they, they just disappear and that's what that video is about. It's a lengthy one. It's about 40 minutes long, and I think it's a very valuable one to watch. I just had to make a command decision today, and I thought that um, people have typically told me the practical side is helpful to them. Um, and I would encourage you, just the reason I mentioned that, I would encourage you, read on your own the parable of the seed and the sower. It's in Matthew 13, and it's in Mark 4, I believe. Um, and that's just a helpful uh, reminder of... The, the task that we face about putting the Word of God in front of people and the response that we can see. Um, so today, uh, this one that we're going to look at is titled Crafting the Message. And then we're going to have some Q&A, and I'm going to put you, uh, give you a little bit of opportunity to kind of put some of these things into practice. And then I'm going to give you uh, an assignment in a couple of weeks. Since the class is over, it's not really homework. You can't really call it homework. It's more of an opportunity. So uh, just as a reminder from last week, we talked about our, our homework of sorts. Uh, it wasn't really homework. It was just really a, a, an opportunity to do something that some of us may not be used to doing, which is talking to strangers, you know? And, and of course, it's not a hard talk. It's just simply being friendly to people, greeting people in the public square in our workplace, uh, which I don't expect that to be hard for anyone here necessarily. Um, any, anyone here ever been assaulted for telling somebody good morning? I almost have. Believe it or not, some people you do, yeah, sometimes if you if you say hello to enough people, you'll find the, the Grinch that stole Christmas, and and they <laughs> they do not want to talk to you. But by and large, it's not a problem. So, Rich, you were sharing your day is just a normal day, but well, your days. Yeah, I, you know, basically, it's a dull life I live. Go to work, go home, yeah. and that's what I do. And so, uh, you go out to the store, you try to be friendly to the the, the checkout person. You know, there's not a lot of lines here unless Walmart, you know, and, and I tried to do something like that. And then one day, I was going through fast food, Tammy's out of town, so I'm feeding myself, so I'm getting some dinner. And so what I decided to do was just buy the dinner for the car behind me. And I just left a note and said, uh, please tell the person, it was, it was a gentleman, Yeah. and I said, just tell the person that Jesus loves them. And that's all I did. And it was the one thing I thought I could maybe do, and I probably didn't have that face-to-face -face concern <laughs> but um, and then at the emergency room I went to emergency room and I started talking to people and there are a lot of Christians he had this gentleman happened to be a young Christian uh, divorced and looking to remarry and the person he's looking to remarry goes to church and that's how he became involved in church so I was able to give him some encouragement and stuff like that I had a similar story and uh, and so it was interesting as you talk to people and I've kind of always been down my wife will just yak 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 you know, she doesn't know a stranger. And, and she'll just share everything. You know, and I'm saying, come on, come on, come on. You don't know these people. What are you doing? But as I talk to people and just kind of be a little more friendly with them, they're all, they're all wanting to be friendly too. Yeah. 
And I'm surprised at how many really are Christians, if you will, or accept Jesus. And so now there's a brother or sister that you've met. That's encouraging to me. Yeah. People will warm to your warmth, I think, is one thing. And also, and I've mentioned this uh, before, but I'll mention it again. Here in our context of the South, the Bible Belt, if you will, uh, we do run into a lot of people who are professing Christians. And in the past, I've kind of looked at that as, oh, okay, these are not these aren't really the people I'm looking to talk to. I want to find the non-believers. But I've come to realize over time and growing up a little bit and maturing, realize that we have just as much opportunity to encourage, equip, and exhort believers that we meet in the public square as we do to call sinners to repentance. And I say that because there's many times that I've come in contact with people who are professing Christians who have never had anyone even challenge them hey, you're a believer. Uh, tell me, what's the gospel? How do I know the Lord? You know what I mean? And, and in, the, in the way of trying to uh, help other Christians grow. And I think that's a, I tell people many times, our efforts in the public square with our ministry are twofold. We're trying to equip believers to do the work of an evangelist, to, to go into the harvest, and we're calling the unsaved to repent and believe. Uh, yesterday was Friday. Yesterday, my friend Mark and I went to UAH, and Christy um, from our church went with us also. And so we're talking to students on campus, and, and sometimes we'll do some public preaching, and sometimes we'll set it up to where we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. Is it Fordham by any chance? Yeah, Christy Fordham. Yeah. And um, so yesterday, we had a whiteboard, a dry erase board like this, but not this big, um, a portable yeah, one. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And that we do that a lot on a college campus, mm -hmm. and, and it really is a very effective way to start conversations with college students for whatever reason. Adults, sometimes not so much. But we just put a thought-provoking question, the question of the day, and it's often just very, very simple. What happens after you die? And then put in choices. This I'm just making, I'm just building the, where I'm going with this. It's not just a, a technique, but, um, and tell the students, come up here, make your choice, fill in a blank, uh, you know, do a write-in. The question yesterday was, where does morality come from? Where does the knowledge of right and wrong, how do you understand right and wrong? Where does that come from? And some standard choices. Parents, society, God, don't know, fill in the blank. And the first young man that walked up and, and made a, his choice, okay, he's already told me what his worldview is when he put that pen on the board. Right? Yeah. Where do you get your morals from? Society. So we started talking a little bit. And um, we didn't immediately move to this discussion. We just started talking about his, okay, okay. How, why did you put that answer? Why do you think that way? Long story short, young man graduated Bob Jones last year. Uh, so he's from our town, Madison, and was raised in some kind of church environment and has just walked away from it. He said, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I can um, accept that view of things. The conversation went to a lot of different directions and went to um, you know, a whole lot of different things, but I deliberately moved the conversation to the gospel because he, what I found is, and this is something we're going to talk about in this session today with the practical side, a lot of times if you just have in your mind, um, I just want to talk to somebody, the conversation can go everywhere. I mean, it can go nowhere, right? You can go somewhere fast, which is nowhere. But if you have in your mind, I want to deliberately deal with <clears throat> the knowledge of sin, the necessity of repentance and faith, and what does a true believer look like. If I want to deal with that, um, I will take the conversation there and, and we'll, Lord willing, make some progress. So anyway, we had a long conversation about his worldview, but I deliberately moved it to this discussion about, do you understand what sin is? Lying, theft, adultery. And it was an interesting thing because his entire demeanor changed. I think the reason I'm saying all this is because I think a lot of times we assume because somebody is a clean-cut, well-behaved, polite person that, had, that says they go to church A, B, or C in town or went to such and such high school. You know what I mean? It's almost like we think, okay, they're in this area and they're good. Yeah. And we go, oh, I, I need the hardcore raging atheist that looks and dresses like an idiot. 
no, no, no. There are so many young, right, right. There are so many young men and young women in our town who were raised in a church culture, but they never understood the gospel in any meaningful way. They never understood, because I asked them point blank, um, can you explain to me, since you said you were raised in a church, can you explain to me how your sin can be forgiven and you can be right with God? And his answer was basically, be a better person. The standard, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, that is the standard churched answer in, in our culture. So that's why I say this, this session uh, on crafting the message, I believe is very practical because it does not allow people to just play that standard church card as a get out of discussion free card. You know, believe in Jesus and, and be a better person. That, that's oftentimes the answer. Uh, this discussion today with this video will we'll try to continue to move the conversation to real questions, very practical and um, personal level questions about sin, the need for Christ, and repentance of faith. Uh, yeah, do you need a handout? Yeah, okay. Everybody was here last week, okay? I know. Let me make sure. I watched the video yes. on YouTube. I all of you. Yes, all, everyone's on YouTube. <laughs> and I don't know why YouTube does this, but I, I mentioned to somebody else, it, it, there you go. it picks the dorkiest screenshot of the entire <laughs> video as the, as the little... Um, Icon. Right, the icon for it. And, and it's usually, you know, That's something just funny. ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't know how to change it. So anyway, nevertheless, this video will probably use that face I just made as the screenshot. <laughs> so let's do this. Let's pray. And uh, I'll go ahead and start this video. And then we'll go through it. It's about half an hour. And then we'll talk through a few things and just see where it goes today. And then I'll give you all some uh, interesting challenges. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you've given us uh, yet another day on this earth in the world that you've made, uh, surrounded by people made in your image, um, your creations, Lord, and yet we realize that the world we live in is <clears throat> under a curse, and we realize that the people that we come in contact with are separated from you by their sin. Uh, they have desperate need to be reconciled to you through the cross of Jesus Christ. I pray that that will be our focus as we go through our discussion today and as we take this on in the coming weeks and months, that we will realize there are so many people in our town that are not reconciled to you. They do not know how their sin can be forgiven and how they could have peace with you. I pray, Lord, let us remember that you have called us to be ministers of reconciliation, that we want people to be brought to the cross, to Jesus Christ, in repentance and faith and we know Lord that is a work that no man can do that I cannot we cannot change the heart of another person but we can lead them to the foot of the cross and leave them there in your hands Lord and trust that you change hearts and minds that you take the hard stony heart the unregenerate heart of a man or a woman and you give them a heart of flesh a heart that is tender toward you and that follows your word and hears your voice what a miracle, Lord, that you accomplish every time you bring one of uh, your creations to repentance and faith. I pray, Lord, let us remember that uh, as we study this today. We simply want to point people to their need for Christ um, and, and just leave that work of salvation in your hands, Lord. But let us be true and faithful. Let us um, remember that we have to deal with the hard topics. We have to deal with the necessity of the new birth, um, but always with a spirit of gentleness and compassion, uh, pleading with them, pulling them, if you will, from the fire, um, urging them be reconciled to God. I pray, Lord, bless our time together and I ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, before questions we before we get started. Okay, so um, I follow you. I'm not a, I don't stalk you on Facebook. Sure, I have a few stalkers. But um, right I do follow you, you know, and. I saw yesterday that you're heading there, and I'm like, yeah, it's the one day I don't have children between this time and this uh -huh. time. How can I find out when you're going before you post it on Facebook? We actually use, and that, that's a great question, because um, so we have about 15 people or so in a group. We use an app called GroupMe, uh -huh. uh, and that's actually how we communicate our 
our minute to minute coordinating of where we're we gonna go and when we're we gonna be there. And the reason I don't just kind of blast it on Facebook uh, three or four days in advance is because oftentimes things change. Uh, people's work commitments, because all of us have jobs and families and, and other commitments, and it can be a back and forth of we're going, we're not going, we're going. And if I do that in a public announcement, it oftentimes becomes kind of people just like, I don't know what, what you're doing. So we use GroupMe, and we can add you to the group. Yeah, not a problem at all. Mind adding me yeah. Fridays are perfect, and I've noticed you've gone a couple of Fridays. I'm without children for a small time. Sure. Of time. Like, yeah. This is and I'll go ahead and make mention that uh, one of the things that I was going to tell you about later in the class, but I'll mention it now since Paula brought it up. It's a good point. Uh, so every Friday night we go downtown, downtown Huntsville. Um, I say every Friday night, almost every Friday night. Sometimes there's weather issues or there's various work commitments because I work at Huntsville Hospital. I'm already down there anyway until about 7 p.m. anyway. So it's, for me, it's no big deal to just go downtown. But as the weather gets colder, um, it's a little less um, logistically, uh, it's a little harder to deal with people in, the, in that area because a lot of people don't want to stand around and talk. But fortunately, the city of Huntsville provides a perfect venue for us called the Tinsel Trail and the Skating Rink. The Skating Rink, the big ice rink that's in Big Spring Park that they build every year, it runs through January or February, that opens, opened yesterday. The skating rink opened yesterday. The Tinsel Trail opens the day after Thanksgiving. And so the following weekend is December 2nd, is a Saturday. And I was gonna plan and coordinate an opportunity for people to join us down at the Tinsel Trail. And we're gonna hand out some tracks and talk to people from about 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. And it is a wonderfully easy, low threat opportunity to go take what we're doing today and put it into actual practice with other people. Uh, I think that going and doing something that's terrifying is easier if you're with other people, um, right? It's always easier to jump out of the plane if the uh, other guy in a parachute is jumping with you, I guess. I've never done that. Can I ask you, did you have to get um, permission to be down there? Okay. No, it's a public park. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'm so excited our American Heritage Girl mm -hmm. troop, we're passing out candy canes down there yeah. with a little scripture on yeah. it and just saying Merry Christmas. Awesome. Monday. Remind me uh, before you leave. I actually have some gospel tracks about the size of these here that have a candy cane on them that talk about the really? relationship of the candy cane and the uh, resurrection that of Jesus. Would be so yeah. If you don't mind. Yeah. We're, I have I'm, we, we normally go to the mall. All right. This year, I'm so excited to be down there. And I don't know if they're in there, Roxanne. I, I don't know if I brought. Is that the story particular. with the blood? blood? It may be. I forget. I do have those, yeah, but I have these at my house. Um, okay. I'll, I'll get them to you. I'll, I'll remind you. I know how to. Yeah. So um, I will. I will put that out to everybody to our on our Facebook page also. Um, but yeah, I'll add you to our group meet. Do you have the time on two December? I'm sorry. Did you get the time on two on two December? Six, six uh, to eight. Six to eight. Because okay. um, if you wait until six, the lights are already on, right. and uh, but it's not you know super late or anything like that, and. We did that last year, the year before. Actually, uh, two years ago, we actually set up a big, uh, the church brought their speaker system out, and we just had a public reading of scripture, re reading through uh, the birth narrative uh, from the Gospels, and then injecting uh, explanation at parts, and had people from our church, Mike Nevin and his wife came out, some other people, and read, and they said it was just an amazingly terrifying and exhilarating thing for them to do. N neither of them had ever done anything of that nature of just being in a public place and reading the Bible you know, we have Bible read throughs here at Cross Point but I'm like this is a empty room mm -hmm. they're gonna read the Bible read it in public yeah. so so December 2nd is just a, a first chance of many um, to go down to the tinsel trail and the skating rink area because uh, there's tons of space there's lots of people and it's just so easy I mean, to get I'm so excited about yeah. Well, we don't have one scheduled right now, um, but probably the third week of December, somewhere close to that time. Sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So let's do the, any other questions before I start the video? Oh, no, no, I'm good. Okay. So don't forget the bagels need to be eaten because. Uh, if you don't eat them, I will. <laughs> the coffee's here to be drank. Um, I'll go ahead and start the video, and then we'll talk about it.